In this video we're going to look at rectilinear motion, in particular the relationships between displacement, velocity, and acceleration. And one application of that is in the design of cams. So here's a simple cam uh, called a plate cam. It's uh, cut out of a piece of flat plate mounted to a shaft. And so as the uh, cam rotates, the follower, which is in contact with that, will move in a linear pattern. So it will go up, down, and also uh, uh, with cams, what you usually want to do is have it dwell or have the follower remain uh, at, at a constant location for a specific period of time as well. So let's look at a simulation here. And so the example cam that we're going to look at here is going to be one that causes the follower to move up and down by one inch, but also has it dwell at the upper and uh, lower limits. So you can see where rise, dwell, fall, dwell, and continue that uh, every cycle or every uh, rotation that we make. So again, in this case, we want it to uh, rise one inch. So the base circle here, which is uh, the circle with the minimum radius of the cam, we've picked arbitrarily at four inches. But that means that the uh, radius of, the, um, uh, of some part of the cam has to be five inches, where, we're, where the uh, follower is going to be one inch above the base circle. So in this case, we've also arbitrarily uh, said that we want each of the rise and fall segments and each of the dwell segments to be of the same time duration. And so that means, uh, again, if we're running at a constant uh, rotational speed, that means that each one of the uh, segments is going to be an equal number of degrees uh, of the cam. So we've divided it into four segments. You can see on the right-hand side, the radius is four inches. So that's going to be the dwell at the, uh, the lower value. Opposite of that, where it's five inches, that's going to be the dwell at the, uh, at the higher value. And in between those transitions, those are going to be the rise and the fall segments. So here's what the displacement of the follower is going to look like. And uh, that, of course, will be the distance above the base circle of the um, uh, profile of the cam. So we've got the two segments that are the dwell at the upper and lower values. And so the real question becomes, how do we connect the dwells? What profiles do we want to use for the rise and the fall segments? And so the simplest way to do that is just to uh, use straight line segments. And let's see how that works. So that's what we have for our uh, first cam profile here. You can see there's the rise and the fall over one segment. And what I want to show now are the um, plots of velocity, acceleration, and position. In this case, we'll show the position or the displacement first. So uh, uh, don't worry about the, the number scale here. Those are relative to, um, uh, to the axis of the shaft. But you can see the main thing that's, that's important is there's a one inch uh, total uh, displacement of the uh, follower. And um, again, we connected those with straight line segments. So this is a, called a constant velocity profile because when we look at the velocity, it makes sense that if we are moving at a straight line here, in other words, at a constant slope, remember that the slope of the displacement is the velocity. So that's why we have a constant value of velocity here and a constant negative value of velocity here as, the, uh, as we move in the uh, fall profile. Well, that all sounds good because if we have a constant velocity, that must mean the acceleration is equal to zero. And it is in the rise and fall segments themselves. The problem, of course, comes because we have this step change right here. Now, in theory, that would be uh, instantaneous, and so we would have an, um, uh, a value of acceleration that actually is infinite. But, uh, you know, with this, uh, we're doing this simulation with a, a, a finite number of time steps, and so we find this big spike here. Now, again, the, the value is not really that important. It doesn't look all that high, but the important thing is let's take a look at what these spikes are and look at uh, comparison to some other profiles. One other thing to notice about these plots is uh, we've gotten rid of the first little piece of time here because uh, we've specified a constant 
uh, angular velocity. Well, that's going to produce infinite acceleration uh, there as well. And also with the, uh, the way that SOLIDWORKS motion uh, handles contact between the follower and the uh, cam, uh, initially it's going to assume that the cam is accelerating uh, under gravity, so we would see a, a 386.1 inches per second squared acceleration for that very first time step, and then at the next time step we would see the, the contact between the follower and the cam would correct that. But to get rid of all that and to concentrate just on what's happened in the rise and fall segments, again I've cut a little bit off of the first uh, time for all of the plots. Okay, so that didn't work very well, uh, not a very good profile. The next one we're going to look at is called a constant acceleration profile. Now you can't have, truly have a constant acceleration over the rise and fall because you'd, uh, you'd, either, you'd just be going faster at the end of the uh, rise or at the end of the fall segments. So what we mean by a constant acceleration uh, profile is that the first half of the rise would be at a constant acceleration and the second half of the rise would be at a constant deceleration. Now this kind of profile actually gives you the minimum value of acceleration that you can have. And so let's look at the velocity profile due to that. And as, as uh, we know, if we have a constant acceleration, that means we have a constant slope here. And so we have these linear segments. And where the uh, maximum velocity occurs is at the end of this uh, constant acceleration segment but then we start decelerating at a constant rate and come back to zero. And of course that's reversed for the fall segment. And what that does for the displacement is that we end up with a much smoother profile. In particular if we look at the start and, uh, and ends of the rise and the fall that we no longer have a, a sharp corner here because of the fact that we have a zero velocity here and so we start out with a zero slope and the velocity as it increases will cause the slope to keep increasing and of course where we have the constant uh, excuse me the highest velocity is going to be the highest slope right here and then the slope gradually begins to uh, uh, to get shallower and ends up at a zero slope again looks pretty good except for one thing we now have these steps in acceleration. And if we take one more derivative, in other words the derivative of acceleration with respect to time, that's called jerk. And you don't hear that very often except in uh, machine design. And uh, was when you're running things at, at high speed and you have a high uh, change in acceleration, that really results in a, in a jerky motion. So if, if this is running at high speed, the fact that we have these uh, uh, steps extreme steps in acceleration means that we won't have a very smooth motion. So the next profile we'll look at is going to be called a simple harmonic profile. I think it's hard to tell a whole lot from just looking at the simulations here of, of what the differences are. But in this case let's uh, start out by looking at the velocity first. And you can see this is selected such that the velocity is a half sine wave of the rise and of the fall. And so what that does for displacement, again we have a nice smooth looking curve here. Um, again because of the fact we start at a zero velocity we're going to start out at a zero slope here. So again nice transitions at the end of the uh, rise and the fall. Now let's look at the acceleration. We got rid of one of the problem areas, which was when we went from the uh, positive acceleration to negative acceleration. Now we have a smooth transition between here. And also notice the relationship that where the acceleration is zero, well that's where you're going to have extreme value of velocity. So the velocity comes to its maximum value where the acceleration is equal to zero. And for the fall, of course we have an acceleration of zero here, that's where the uh, velocity, a uh, negative velocity or the velocity downward is is maximum as well. Um, again better, we don't have an infinite slope right here but we still do have a high slope at the beginning so again the jerk is going to be uh, not infinite there 
but uh, still going to be relatively high. So this is still not the best profile that we could come up with. Finally, we come to what's probably the best of, let me get rid of these, uh, these plots here. We come to what's probably the best of the uh, simple uh, profiles, and that's called the cycloidic, cycloidic uh, profile. And for that, let's start by looking at the acceleration first. And because the way that this uh, profile is designed is we make the acceleration a complete sine wave. And so that way we don't have the um, infinite jerk at the beginning and at the end. And so again, just looking at the velocity and displacement, the velocity associated with that, you can see it also doesn't have the um, uh, sharp corner here anymore because we start with uh, uh, a zero acceleration, means we start out with a zero slope of the velocity. Once again, where the acceleration is equal to zero, we see the maximum velocity. And we also show the smooth profile for our displacement. Of course, there's a whole lot more to, to cam design than this, and, and uh, high-speed cams probably use a combination of these profiles to get rid of some of, uh, some of those problems. But again, hopefully the, the lesson here has been just looking at that overall relationship between acceleration, velocity, and displacement for linear motion.